In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple graph animation inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe After Effects and you have a brand new composition created, we are first just going to begin by creating a new line. So in order to aid with this, in order to make this easier, we're just going to turn on the proportional grid. So just select this button and select proportional grid. And we're just going to use these lines here as our reference. So in order to create this line, we just want to go up into the pen tool. So select the pen tool. Then we'll go across to these two options here. We've got fill and stroke. Select the fill word, not the box. And then select this box here, which is none. Press OK and then that should turn gray with a red line through. Then we'll turn on stroke and we'll just select the second option, which is solid color. We'll press OK. And then you want to select the color of this line. So I'm just going to select white and then we can increase the stroke width. So this is just the width of the line. So let's just begin with a nice simple 10. And then you just want to create a point up here and we'll create a point down there. And if we turn off the proportional grid, you can see we've got this line. But of course, we need our horizontal line as well. So we'll turn that back on. Make sure you're not selected on the shape. Like if you're selected here, it will just continue creating on there. And that's not what we want because we want to be able to control this individually. So we're just going to go ahead and select that bottom corner. Then we'll go over to here and we'll turn the proportional grid off. And as you can see, we've got our graph now created. Of course, though, as you can see, if I zoom in on here, you can see that's not quite connected. So I'm just going to pull these closer together to connect that up like this. Now from here, we need to animate these on because we don't just want these to start on screen because that would just look a little bit boring. We want to animate these in from the bottom left corner. So we'll go into both of these layers. So drop down arrow, then we'll go add and we want to select trim paths, which is down here. And we'll do that for both. So add trim paths. Then we'll go into trim paths on both layers. So you've got start, end, offset, start, end, offset. As you can see, we want the end to be down at 0%. So create a brand new keyframe on end at 0 on the top one. Then we'll go to the bottom one, pull that down to 0. And as you can see, it's animating up to here. So if that's doing that, then you want to pull the start down so that it animates down into this corner here. So pull that up to 100. And there you go, that's now disappeared off screen in the direction that we want it to go in. So we'll create a brand new keyframe on the start on the bottom layer. Then we'll go roughly a second across and we'll pull the start down to zero. And then we'll pull the end on shape layer two up to 100%. So when we play this back, you can see we've got this graph animation now animating in. Of course, though, the movement at the moment just looks a little bit robotic. So we're just going to highlight those keyframes, right click on one of those, select keyframe assistant, and we'll select Easy Ease. This is going to convert those linear keyframes into soft Easy Ease keyframes. It just makes the animation look a lot softer and I much prefer the look of that. So at this moment in time, we've got this coming in. Now we need to animate the actual graph animating across. So we'll do the same thing again. We'll go ahead and select the pencil. Then we can change the color of this if you like. So I'm just going to select yellow or maybe a darker yellow. So somewhere around here. Press OK, and then we'll start in that bottom left corner and then just feel free to animate up. Of course, if you've got precise figures, then feel free to adjust them accordingly. But I'm just going to create this general graph like this. There we go. Now I'm just going to add another data input. So I'm just going to create another line with a different color. We'll go for this blue. Press OK, we'll animate from up here this time. We'll go down, we'll go down again, we'll go up, down. Then we'll just create another point as well. So change the color of the stroke again. And just create your animation accordingly. There we go. So we've got these three data inputs now on our graph, as you can see. But of course, we need to animate these in as well. And at the moment, if you zoom in, you can see these overlapping the bar. So we don't want that. We want them to be underneath. So we'll grab these two layers and we'll drop them up to the top. So we'll put them up there. And there you go, they're now behind. To make life easy for ourselves, by the way, I'm just going to lock these top two layers so we can't do anything with these. So we're only adjusting these three lines down here. So now that these have animated in, we want to animate these graphs across. So the same thing again, we're just going to go into all of these layers. We'll add trim paths. So add trim paths, not rounded corners. We'll add trim paths. 
add trim paths. We'll go in to trim paths on all of those layers. And then just pull the end down to 0% on that top layer, on the middle layer, and then on that bottom layer as well. Make sure that's down to zero, not two, not three, zero. Then you want to create a new keyframe on end on all of those different layers. We'll go roughly two or three seconds across and we'll pull them all up to 100%. And when we play this back, you can see that animates in and then this animates in like this. Of course, if you wanted to delay them, then you can always just move these keyframes across like this and this will delay them coming in. So they come in at slightly different times, as you can see, and that looks really cool. And then we're just going to do the same thing with these keyframes again. So at the moment, these are linear keyframes, but if we highlight all of them, right click one of them, select keyframe assistant and select easy ease, these should now look a lot nicer. There you go, looks a lot softer. Now I accidentally pressed this option earlier, but I'm actually gonna go back to it. So if we go into shape layer five, so this is the pink layer, we'll go add and select round corners. Then if we select the drop down arrow in round corners and we increase the radius, you can see it's actually going to round these corners of the masks off. So if you didn't want this to be a hard line like this, then you can just increase this a little bit so that it's more of a curve rather than that hard points. So I'm just gonna add that onto all of those layers. So we'll go add, round corners and then we'll just increase that to the same number which is 24 and then we'll do the same thing on that bottom layer so add round corners we'll go into round corners and select that same number 24. let's see how that looks there we go that looks really cool so from here what you can now do is just unlock those top two layers feel free to rename this by the way if that makes life easier so I'll just right click, rename bar one, rename bar two. And then of course you can rename these the colors. So rename pink. Feel free to solo this layer, by the way. So this is this button. Feel free to solo to figure out which layer you're affecting. So this is the blue one. And then this bottom layer is the yellow one. Now, if you didn't want this solid line, if you want this to be more of a dash, then all you have to do is go into one of those, go into the shape one, stroke one, and then you can see you've got this plus button here. So you've got dashes plus. So if we press the plus button, it turns that into a dash, and then you can either increase the amount of dashes or decrease. It's completely up to you. Now, personally, I prefer the look of the solid line in this example, but that is an example of what you can do if you did want those dashes. But moving on, before I got distracted, we're gonna go ahead and create a new null object so that we can control the size of all of these layers at the same time, rather than having to adjust the scale and the position all individually. So we'll go layer, new, null object, and we'll highlight all of the layers underneath that null object. We'll use this parent and link tool. So we'll drag this tool here, so the parent pit whip, and drag that onto the null one. Alternatively though, if that's not working, then you can just select this box and select that null there. If you can't even see parental link, by the way, then just right click up here on this box, go into columns and make sure parent and link is ticked. As you can see at the moment, it's not ticked, but if I turn it on, it's now there. Now pairing your layers to your null object basically means that we have full control of all of these layers just in one option. So rather than going into all of these layers and decreasing the scale and trying to get them to all match, we can just go into the null object, go into transform, and we can just decrease the scale or move this wherever we want this to appear. So this means we can actually animate this off at the end. So all of this appears, we can hold for a second and then we'll create a brand new keyframe on scale, move across, and we'll go down to zero. As you can see, that disappears at the end like that. Again, we're just going to convert these keyframes to easy ease keyframes. And there you go. Now, if you wanted to add different values across the vertical axis and the horizontal axis, so maybe you want numbers to run up the side and then you want names or something to run across the bottom or a specific digit to run across the bottom, then all you would need to do, let me show you, you go up to the T icon up here. So that is the horizontal type tool. 
Create brand new text somewhere on the left here. So we'll go zero or actually no, we'll start at 100. Then we'll highlight that, go into the character window on the right. And if you can't see the character window for any reason, then just go into window, make sure character is turned on. Then you can just decrease the size of this. You can change the font. You can do whatever you want with that. But we'll just place that on the left like this. And then of course we want to animate this on. So once this has appeared up here, you just want to press S on the keyboard, create a brand new keyframe on scale. We'll move back a little bit, increase the scale to 120, 130, move back some more and we'll go down to zero. So this pops in like that. Then I'm just going to trim the start of that so that the video actually starts when it animates in. Then of course you can make a few copies of that. So we'll just copy that layer. So we'll go command C, command V. We'll press P on the keyboard to load position and pull that down and then change that number. We'll do the same thing again. So we'll copy the 50, press P, move this down and we'll change this to zero. We need to move that 50 down a little so that's in the middle. And then of course, feel free to stagger these on. So at the moment, they're all coming in at the same time. But it would be nice for the zero to start as this is coming up. So we'll drag the zero back in time. Then you can move the 50 back in time a little. And then you get this nice effect like this. And of course, because we have parented everything else to the null, we need to select these three layers and parent these to null one. So these will now be controlled at the end when that animates out. There you go. And of course, you could do the same thing across the bottom as well. You can create your text going across the bottom. You can add more text in on the left. It's completely up to you. But that is the basics of how you would make a Groff animation inside of Adobe After Effects. I almost said Premiere. But there you go. That is the basics of how you would create a Groff animation inside of Adobe After Effects. So thank you ever so much for watching. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you in the next video. See you there.